Hello everyone, Hyper here, and this video will be the first one in the Castle Natria series where I will cover each boss from the perspective of an unholy DK, how to maximize DPS by where to use your cooldowns, give you some tips on like legendaries, conduits, talent setups, and just general boss tips uh, when approaching these fights on Mythic. Back in BFA I did a how to parse series. This will be a little bit similar, but obviously parsing is kind of a joke since you pretty much just need to get chain pi'd to get rank ones um but nonetheless this should give you a good idea of how to approach the fight to do good damage as an unholy dk okay so this footage is from week two of mythic so i do have deadliest coil crafted on my chest piece i am using a default single target build as a necrolord dk with a many soul bind and then for my conduit i have eternal hunger so let's roll the footage and see what we have. One thing that I do want to mention is that on pull, normally I use my quantum trinket uh, right before the pull, then I swap to a different gear set. Uh, that way the second use of quantum doesn't just, you know, randomly heal someone or give the healers mana. But in this specific pool, I was fixing a weak aura right before going into the boss fight, so I forgot to swap off of my trinket. And you'll see that in the footage. So in general, this fight is super simple. Uh, as you can see here, I open my weak chorus to fix my PI macro because the Disc Priest is using um, Power Infusion on me. So I use my Trinket, my army, and all my cooldowns on pull, and we just start doing damage. The only downside here will be that I essentially don't get a second use of Quantum since I think it ends up healing someone or giving the healer mana. Normally I'd swap to a different gear set with a different unused Trinket. So on pull, you pop everything. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is that AMS can be very, very useful for immuning Wave of Blood. As you can see, it's coming up here in 5 seconds. If your healers are struggling for mana, you should absolutely AMS to immune that debuff. Uh, on progression, it is very useful. For us, this fight is a bit of a joke, so I didn't do it, but it's probably something I should have paid attention to. Now, when this first Shriek comes out, you just want to run behind the pillar. Do not use your Unholy Blight or your Dark Transformation before running to the pillar. That's just going to waste a pretty large uptime of it. So you want to run to the pillar, then as you're running back, you want Unholy Blight Dark Transformation, and your Apocalypse should be up a few seconds after that, depending on how many Death Coils you got off. Uh, but other than that, in this phase, there's not much going on. IBF is alright if you get targeted by with echolocation and you have to run out, IBF is decent for mitigating some of the damage. AMS, like I said, very good for wave of blood, it just prevents the dot completely. Um, then AMZ is pretty good on the melee, if there's a set of waves or a wave of blood that your healers can't really cover, you can drop AMZ on the raid. Or in the intermission, if your raid gets up to pretty high stacks of the lantern debuff, then you can use it um, on your raid as well. So we're about to go into the intermission phase here. As you can see, my Unholy Blight and my DT are up. You can't technically press those, I believe, and they will be back up when you come out of the phase. But I was uncomfortable enough with the timings here, so I just held on to them. You'd only get like a second or two of them on the boss anyway, so generally I don't think it's worth pressing. Now when you come out of this intermission phase, you will have your A-Bombs limb back up, um, Unholy Blight, Dark Transformation, and Apocalypse. Do not second pot, um, your second pot shouldn't even be up if you used it on pull, which I did not in this specific pull, but generally you want to use your first pot on pull. So as you can see, we come out of the intermission, I have my DT, there it goes, a bomb limb, dark transformation, tr uh, trinket, and apocalypse, just pop it on the boss. And around this time, the boss is going to start pushing into execute range. Now this is just a mirror image of the first phase as far as your cooldown timings, your Unholy Blight and your Dark Transformation are going to come up when that Shriek comes out, but again you want to make sure that you hide behind the pillar, then run back out, then use those cooldowns. Um, as far as the Lantern is concerned, if you have a ranged DPS who's giving the melee debuffs, just make sure you get at least 2 ticks of the Lantern and that should last you long enough to see all the echo locations. Um, or the little orbs that are floating around. Uh, as you can see, again, Shriek is coming out. My UB and Dark Transformation are up, but I didn't use them. 
One thing that you can do, which I missed the timing on there, is Soul Reaper the boss, if he's in Execute, or she in this case, uh, right before you run to the pillar, because that is essentially going to give you a nice little extra pop of damage that would, wouldn't would happen if you didn't do it. Um, and then by the time you get back, your Soul Reaper will be back up again, so you just get essentially an extra use of Soul Reaper. Now, in this specific kill, I was betting on us killing the boss before we do a second intermission. So I saved up my army, my DT, my APOC, um, and used them all together. Normally, and especially on your first kill, you're going to get that second intermission. So make sure that you go into that second intermission and you just repeat the process. Then coming out of the second intermission, you're going to have absolutely everything synced together. You're going to have army, DT, APOC, a bomb limb and your second potion so on progression you want to uh, sync all those up together coming out of the second intermission for us it was a little bit faster kill this week um so i ended up just sync trying to sync most of them together towards the end of the fight there but in general you should absolutely um hold off on your second army until you come out of the second intermission so i think i end up checking my details to see if i got a second use of the quantum trinket um and as you can see the uptime here is 25 seconds so that means i only got one use out of it super sad um but that's it for shriekwing if you guys have any questions please leave them in the comment section below or you can join my discord where i will answer any questions as well if you enjoy this content you can go ahead and check out my patreon um patrons get some cool perks that regular subs don't such as getting access to my ui um, and early access on some special videos, especially DK guides. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.